Hey everyone, and welcome to the second episode in my tile scrolling series game, where we'll be making a tile scrolling game. Wow. Today we're going to be making the world an actual world, instead of just being an infinite void of stone blocks. And we'll be making it to where each tile has an ID, and you can use that ID to get data about the tile, like what it looks like and all that stuff. And that's kind of like the base system of this game. So make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. But without further ado, let's just get right into this tutorial. Alrighty, so I have have no new sprites today but I do have some new costumes as you can see here I have all the tiles that you'll need for this project right here I have one which is some air two which is bedrock it's kind of hard to see three which is stone four is dirt five is grass six is long grass which should actually be all the way at the bottom make sure that if you're doing a non full block that it is all the way on the bottom like this then I have flower which is just long grass with the flower eight which is wood nine Nine, which is a like a leaf 10 is the wood in the background of a leaf 11 is clay 12 is the torch 13 is this thingy packed dirt which you'll spawn on 14 is the ladder 15 is tin 16 is coal 17 is copper 18 is silver and 19 is weird looking gold one thing that is worth noting is that if you have a small enough tile it'll kind of break the system because it's not big enough so for some reason these grass tiles seem to work i did some playing around Around, and it basically has to be larger than this line right here it has to be at least half the tile not exactly sure why but if you're having issues and what you're going to need to do is convert it to a vector and then you want to draw a invisible box and I made it a little too big hang on let me shrink it as you can see now this says 8 by 8 but it still looks small so that's what you need to do if your half tiles aren't working and as always you can grab these costumes in the link in the description down below I have an art project shared for this game okay so let's start with the ID system. Every single tile in the game needs to have a unique ID and you may be wondering why we're not just going to use like switch costumes. Well, remember how last episode we made this looping? Well, basically once this clone gets over here, it'll loop to the other side. So that means that this clone is the exact same clone as this clone that looped over here. That means that if we have this one as a dirt tile, say, and then it loops, it'll still be a dirt tile over here. Versus if we use the ID system, we grab the data from a big list and then it'll switch to the right costume to making the world look like it's big. So that's what we need to set up. So let's give every tile a unique ID. To do this, we need to first make some variables that will keep track of how big our world is. So make a for all sprite variable called world width and then another one called world height. And then in the very beginning, right after the show, set the world width to 100 and then the world height to 200. That seems like a good size. Now that we have this, we can actually start assigning IDs to all the tiles. So make a for the sprite only variable called tile list ID. Make sure it's for the sprite only and now click OK. Next, in the very beginning, let's go ahead and set the tile list ID to 1. Right after the change tile Y, you can change that tile list ID by 1. Then at the bottom here, it's a little bit different. So once it changes the X by 1, it, the Y gets reset to the very bottom of the world. So we can't just change it by 1. Because if you think about it, this ID would be 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, and 7, then 8. But then once we teleport here, it needs to increase by a bigger number because it teleports to the bottom. So we want to change the tile list ID by a minus block here and put the world height minus tile amount Y. So that just changes it by the height of the world attracted from the amount of tiles on screen. Then at the very bottom, go ahead and set the tile list ID to blank. That way the sprite doesn't have one. And make sure you actually set the world height. I had world width here twice instead of world width and height. Now that we make sure we actually set the right variables, we can check to make sure the ID system is working. So check if we are touching the mouse pointer, then we can go ahead and say tile list ID. You can see that the very first tile is 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up till 10. Then when we move, it jumps up quite a bit to 200 and so on and so forth. So those are the item of the list we're going to make in a second that these tiles correspond to. So let's make that list. Make a for all sprite list called tile grid. And now let's make a custom block that'll create this. So make a custom block called create list grid like so and click run screen without refresh and now go ahead and delete all the tile grid in there and now all we need to do to make this work is repeat the world height then inside of that repeat the world width add say one to tile grid and then make sure you run the create grid list after the generate clone grid in the beginning you can see when we start it's a big list
list of 20,000 items. So now all we need to do is go ahead and get rid of that say stuff and switch costume to item one of tile grid and changes to item list ID of tile grid. So now if we start the game, you can see that it should be blue. But if we go ahead and show the tile grid and replace item one of tile grid with say, let's do 11, which is clay. And we replace it. Look at this. The very bottom left tile turns into a clay. Now there is a slight issue. If I go ahead and move to the right and the tile gets looped, the tile kind of repeats itself. And that's really weird. So it kind of creates this infinite thing. We need to make the ID change once this loops. So what we can go ahead and do is make a for the sprite only variable called tile ID. And this is just to clean it up a little bit. In the looping, we can set the tile ID to this right here. Then right here, we can switch costume to tile ID and you can see that it still works, which is good. Now to make the ID stuff work, let's go ahead and change the tile list ID right here by do a zero minus tile amount X, which is the amount on screen times the world height, which is the total amount of tiles in the world. Now duplicate this and put it in the zero minus X and just change it by the tile amount X times world height. Now for the Y greater than loop cap, change the tile list ID by zero minus tile amount Y. And then for the zero minus Y, change tile list ID by just the plain tile amount Y. Okay, so now that we have the looping, let's go ahead and test what we did earlier. So we're going to replace item one of tile grid with say six. If we click on that, you can see that this becomes grass. And if we go to the left, it's still going to loop because this is technically out of the world. But if we go right or up, you can see that it doesn't loop and it switches to the right costume. So let's limit the camera so it's not so confusing because it's kind of weird now because you can go off of the world. Okay, so really quick, let's make a blank sprite called player. And we're not actually going to be making the player this time, but we will be doing the camera movement. So add a wing green if I clicked forever and then make a new block called camera movement like so, and then run without screen refresh and run that in the forever loop. Okay, now that we have this block running, we can use this to limit the camera movement. So go ahead and check if Rolex is less than 240, which is perfectly one screen to the left. Now, if you are not using a 16 by 16 pixel grid resolution, then this will number will be different. But if you are following along in the same resolution that I am, you can just copy these numbers. We could do this with math using like the tile spacing and stuff, but for now, I'm just gonna do it this way. Then check if the scroll Y is less than 180, then set it to 180. So really quick, instead of adding one to the tile, grid I'm gonna add three which is stone so that way we can see the world and make sure you actually set the scroll Y to 180 and not the scroll X like I did you can see now if we start this game up we can't go to the right it stops us or if we go too far down it stops us as well which is really really good now there is a little bit of weird movement because of the way we're doing our camera movement so go ahead and pull the change scroll X into the player and get rid of it here and now put that above the camera movement now you can see that that movement is gone now we need to make sure that we can't go too far up or too far right. So go ahead and check if the scroll X is greater than add a times operator here and put the world width times pull out the backdrop number of stage and changes to tile manager and changes to the tile move step of tile manager and then put that in a minus here and subtract 240 so if the scroll x is greater than the world width then set the scroll x to all of that then duplicate this and then check if the scroll y is greater than the world height times all of that minus 180 make sure you change both of these to 180 and make sure you change this one to world height as well. Oh my gosh, I did it again. It's not working because I set the scroll X here. Make sure you change this to set scroll Y. So now you can see that once I reach to the top of the world, here we go. Look at this. It limits it and same to the left and then same to the right. Okay. This is finally working. I'm messing a lot of stuff up today. So now that we have the world limited and stuff, let's check to make sure our ID system is working. So we can replace item one of tile grid with any ID we want. Let's go ahead and do five. So if I do that and click that, you can see that the very bottom left tile 
tile is a grass block now. And if we move up, you can see that a grass block doesn't pop up. But if we move back down, here we go, it reads the data from the list and is good. Or if we move to the right, there we go, it doesn't loop or anything. It's only in that one position. So the ID is just the number of the item that it is in the list. So say the tile list ID is 35, then it'll be stone because right here it's 35. Now let's make this look cool. So instead of adding the three to tile grid, I'm going to do pick random one all the way to 19 because that's the total amount of tiles we have. So pick random one to 19 in the tile grid here. And you can see that when we start, look at this, every single tile in the game has a different looking sprite. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's how you'd start w doing world generation. Really quick, I'll show you a very basic system. So I'm going to repeat world width here, and then I'm going to add two, which is bedrock, to tile grid, and I'll do that two times. Then I'll repeat world height minus two, because we already took up two tiles, and just add three, which is stone. And look at this, the very bottom of the world is made from bedrock, but if we go up, the bedrock's not there. Okay, really quick, for some reason I see seams here. You can see the tile actually actually switching and I'm not sure why that is. Okay, so as you can see here, for some odd reason, the tile ID is making it not work. So for now, I'm going to get rid of the tile ID variable and then just switch costume to the item tile list ID of grid here. And you can see that takes out the scene. I'm not sure why it worked in my original project, but not in this, but hey, it works for now. Now you can see that's completely seamless and there's no flashing. But yeah, this is like the very base of the system and this is how the whole game works. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If it helped you out, then make sure you hit that like button. If you have been any questions about something I didn't explain well, then you can drop a comment and I'll do my best to explain it better. Hit subscribe and this has been Owen and I'm out.